Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to the Phys Ed Summit 3.0, and thank you so much for joining us for the 24-hour back-to-back global event, one of its kind for the PE community. And we couldn't make this day happen without you. We are very humbled by the outpour of support and promotion of the summit from each and every one of you. By sharing with just one person, you're able to impact hundreds of students. Thank you so much for being here to push best practices, effective physical education, and professional development forward. This is an amazing PE community, and we're so excited to be a part of it. A couple of reminders. Uh, One, we're using technology. And with that, um, mishaps can happen. So uh, we appreciate your patience in advance. And that if for some reason the video feed stops, uh, visit the Tozzle and we'll get a new link up as soon as we can. Uh, may take a minute, but we'll get there. So please, again, thank you for your patience. Also, after the summit, if you would uh, fill out the feedback survey on the Phys Ed Summit 3.0 homepage, um, we'd really like some feedback. Uh, we want to make 4.0 even better, and your input. Uh, is extremely valuable. Uh, And also, in order to receive your PD certificate, you're going to need to fill out that survey as well. So now, what you've been waiting for. Uh, Presentation today will be by Joe Bailey. Uh, Teaches physical education at D.C. Everest Senior High School in Weston, Wisconsin. Uh, She's originally from the U.K. and spent much of her life in Hong Kong and taught in both the UK and Hong Kong for several years before moving to the United States in 2004. She is a National Board Certified Teacher, a Google Certified Teacher, and was the 2013 Midwest Shape America High School Physical Education Teacher of the Year. Uh, She is an avid technology and gadget lover, and Joe is always looking for ways to improve workflow, enhance learning, and leave more time for being active. Today, she's going to talk about solo taxonomy, which measures the level of understanding a student has of a topic, unit, concept, or idea, and places the student at the center of the learning process. This session will show you how to implement solo taxonomy in physical education and demonstrates how solo provides excellent evidence of student understanding, perfect for educator effectiveness. So this is a pre-recorded session, so I hope that you will still continue to back channel through the Tazel link. And My name is Jo Bailey, and I teach at uh, DC Everest High School in Western Wisconsin. And my Phys Ed Summit 3.0 presentation is going to be on going, going solo, using solo taxonomy in physical education and health. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that most people want to know is what exactly is solo taxonomy and how is it going to help me? Well, solo taxonomy stands for the structure of observed learning outcomes, um, which sounds kind of complicated, but what it basically means is it's a model that describes levels of complexity in a student's understanding of subjects. So the higher they are in the taxonomy, the more understanding Um, they have a particular concept or idea or skill. But rather than have me explain it, I'm going to refer to this great little video which will show it in much more clarity.
Okay, so I hope that gives you a much better idea of exactly what it is. Um, the five levels are pre-structural, which is where you don't know anything. Unistructural, where you have one idea about a concept or um, idea or skill. Multistructural, you have several, several different ideas, but they're not quite related to each other yet. Relational, now you're starting to see the connections between different ideas or concepts. And then finally, extended abstract is like the big picture. You can see things way further and beyond um, just generalizations. So how did I get started? Well, to be honest, I failed my uh, student learning objective. Now, for any of us who are involved in education, um, we know that we are held, obviously held accountable for our students' learning. And it doesn't really matter which country you're in. We're all we all have to show that we are doing our job in one way, shape, or form. Now, for us here in the US, and for me personally in Wisconsin, um, we have Educator Effectiveness, and each year we need to create a student learning objective that we're focused on. So mine related to health-related components of fitness, and the application of those and the FIT principle to specific activities with the idea being that students need this knowledge to help them create personal training programs or exercise programs that suit and meet their needs throughout the lifespan. So after the first semester, I looked over my data and I didn't reach the goal that I'd set for myself. So I went back and did a little uh, reflection, had a chat with some of the students who hadn't made it, and for some of them, they truly hadn't made the connection. For others, one of the main questions I was assessing them on in their summative exam, they just didn't bother to answer. So I was able to get a few more ideas from verbal conversations with them, but it was clear that despite what I thought I had done in terms of educating them, there was still a missing link. And this is why I got started with solar taxonomy. So what I love about it is that it takes things away from being a teacher-centered approach to a student-centered approach. And the idea is that students are continuously self-assessing themselves and where they're at in their level of understanding or performance in an activity or of a concept or idea. The, one of the key parts is that students must be able to justify where they are on that learning continuum. And the other two things I think are hugely important is it is all about them as a student, me. It's what do I need to do next? Um, what should I do next? Where am I going? There's no comparison to anybody else. It's on, all the focus is on self-improvement. The second part that I love is that, I can, and I keep emphasizing this, it's okay to know nothing. You know, all of us, when we try something new for the first time, we may have very little idea about uh, an idea or a concept or a skill or a performance, and that's okay. And I think that takes a lot of fear out of the learning process for students when they realize it's okay. You are going to learn, but if your starting point is from nothing, it's not a problem. It's also exceptionally easy for students to be able to see their progress. And as we all know, when you can see that you're getting better at something, it's really, really motivating. So how do I get going then? Well, I started introducing it during a weight training unit. And like with anything new that you try in education, be upfront with the students. You know, I let them know that we were trying something new. It was an experiment. I wasn't sure how it was going to go, but we were, we were going to learn through the process together. And what I did was create a rubric for each of the grade level outcomes that I was targeting within that unit. And before we started, I had the students self-assess themselves with a date entered at the level they felt they were at within each rubric. And I'm just gonna show you that now so you can see what it looked like. Okay, let's make this a bit bigger. Okay, so for weight training, you can see here, I've got my levels of a taxonomy here with the symbols. And of course, being high school, you know, we do have to report out on grades and corresponding grades that a student could achieve in each different um, level. And then for the grade level outcomes, it simply went from the pre-structural where I would know nothing about weight training 
all the way up to being able to describe benefits of weight training and explain why weight training leads to these benefits. And then at the extended abstract level, you know, the overarching uh, big idea view, um, being able to evaluate which benefits were most applicable to uh, me as a person. And we looked at movement concepts, um, assessment of program, program planning, and so for each one, a student would write the date in. So if on, let's say, um, let's, what do we have here? January the 5th or the 4th, they were here. And then maybe one or two weeks later, they would evaluate themselves again. And this time on February the 2nd, they've moved up to here. And sometimes students moved up to the top level and sometimes they didn't. And that's okay because you're not going to necessarily move everybody up to the extended abstract level for everything that you're coming you're covering in class the, the idea is that they are moving from one side of the taxonomy um, to the other as they're progressing okay so moving on let's pull this back up again all right so as i said students reassess themselves during the unit and once they got the idea that they weren't going to be let off the hook, I was going to keep questioning themselves. And they started to ask more questions and make the connections so that they could move up to the next level. The nice thing about it was I could then target students by level. So if I had a group of students who were at the multi-structural level for a particular grade level outcome, I could bring them together and focus on their needs. At the same time, I did have a group of students who were already at the extended level, the top level. And I was able to go to them and say, okay, you've mastered where we wanted to go in class. Now, what do you want to learn? And at that point, they identified a TRX equipment in the gym and they wanted to know how to use it. So that was where they were extending themselves in a different direction above and beyond what we'd planned to cover in class. Now, students verbally justified where they were with me during the class periods. We completed little quick written assessments, no more than five minutes or so, um, no more than once a week. And it went so well that the start of the second semester of this school year, I'm like, that's it. We're jumping in with two feet and using it throughout the semester. So here's an example of some of the learning statements that I had posted on my gym wall. So the students could see what it was that we were looking for in terms of their learning over the course of the semester. So at the first level, which we're going to go back to in a second, they knew nothing about the health related components of fitness, then one thing about them, and then they could name all five, and they could link it to an activity that improved a specific component fitness, and the icing on the cake, they could apply the fit principle to the components of fitness and relating to activities as well. Now these were posted on my walls. They were visually there for everybody to see. And what I did is I gave each student a post-it, which they put their initials on. And as we started off the semester or the, the unit, I had them place their post-its where they felt they were. So you can see for the ones I just showed you in the previous slide, the vast majority of students identified themselves as being on the uh, unistructural level. They had one idea about health related components of fitness um, and what they were. A few knew them all, and we had you know, just a handful who were a little bit higher up on the taxonomy. So let's fast forward a, couple, a week or so. And, to, and of course, they had helped covered this concept before at junior high. Somehow it had gone missing along the way. You can see clearly now we're starting to make some progress. A lot of students have seen the connections. They feel that they can not only name those components, but they can link them to an activity that works them. Now, there's a reason why I have three different colors up there. I'll go back a sec. Um, each color represents a different class period. So it made it much easier for a student to find theirs. And also for me to see visually, um, if one class needed, to, needed more work in one area over another class. The reason why I have um, these statements here on the right, you can't see very clearly on this slide, but in the bottom right-hand corner, 
there are terms that describe what, stu what a student should be able to do at each level. So down at the um, uni structural level, it might be define. When, then we get to describe, then we get into relating and analyzing and creating. So a little bit of a marriage between Bloom's taxonomy and solar taxonomy there. We also repeated the same thing during swimming. We knew nothing about BLAPT. Now BLAPT is the acronym that I use during swimming. It stands for body position, leg action, arm action, breathing, and timing. The idea being that I wanted my students to, even if they couldn't necessarily perform a stroke perfectly, you know, a three week swimming unit, you're not going to see a massive amount of growth, but at least they could show they could understand each element of the stroke and recognize it in others and identify where the fit principle would apply to swimming. So for example, greater flexibility would increase a student's ability to pull um, more water with each stroke, which would then propel them further through the water. And again, I made sure that we had post-its and posted them so students could see their progress. So the beginning of the unit, and this didn't surprise me because the acronym was totally new, pretty much everybody said, I don't know anything about this, which is fine. A couple of weeks later, we are starting to see some progress here. And then by the end of March, when I moved these out of the swimming pool area back into my gym, then you can see that we've got everybody um, bar one. I can't remember if that was the student who was way or not who've moved into a minimum of the multi-structural level. So you can see, not only is it a great visual for me as a teacher, but for the students to see, wow, look at us as a whole and where we've come in our journey in this particular concepts and ideas. So like I said, the post-its were fantastic. I only used initials and most students, they, they were absolutely fine with it. No one said, I don't want my initials on there. Um, when, if students wanted to move the post-it up, they had to justify why they are moving it up. It wasn't just a case of, oh, I know more now, here I am. And for the most part, that's where I used the quick write to see if they really could link their learning and show me that, yes, this is why I'm here or I should be here. So here's a couple of examples of the quick writes that I used. So this is one for the components of fitness. And... I'm gonna read what it says, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of time to think about what you think about this statement. So, this student has identified themselves as being at the uh, multi-structural level, so which means they should know all five health-related components of fitness. And they've said, I'm on this level because I know how to apply frequency, time, strength, exercise to my daily life. So I'm going to pause for a second, let you think, and then I'll discuss. Okay, so my thought here was that first of all, this student has not link hasn't sorry explained any of the five health related components of fitness so really they're not here secondly while they've mentioned frequency time and strength to their daily life they haven't actually said how they would do that so with this student i went back to them and said hang on a second you've told me this but you haven't actually justified it or explained it at all you need to do that in order because that demonstrates your knowledge so for students who did that, I gave it them back and they tried to see if they could add more detail to it. Here's another example. So this student put themselves on the um, relational level because they knew cardio, muscular endurance, muscular strength, body composition, flexibility, and they've got some examples of different exercises for those things or activities. Now, remember the... Um, multi-structural level, you should be able to name all five, which the student has. 
and the um, relational level, they should be able to link them to an activity that works it. So I'm going to give you again 15 or so seconds to see where you think this student should be at. Okay, now if you're like me, you'll probably think that they're somewhere in the middle here. They have got all five health clothing poems of fitness, but they're not quite at the relational level yet. They're starting to make connections, it's progress, but not quite there. Moving on to swimming, here's a more clear picture how a student's learning has changed over the course of the unit. So they started off saying that they knew one thing, and you can see here, this is the earliest thing they did in terms of they have, they've got balance instead of body position, they've got technique instead of timing, but they've got some ideas. And then we move up and they now are able to apply this to a stroke of their choice. So this student has talked about the body position, how the kick works, what the arms should be doing, um, and now started to relate it to the frequency, intensity, time and type as well. So you can see the progress that's been made over the course of the unit. And I have another student on the next slide who also made similar progress. So again, here we've started off on the multi-structural level, body position, legs, arms, breathing and timing. Now we're getting some details, some technique details of what it should look like for each of those acronyms and um, application to components of fitness and looking at frequency, intensity, time and type here as well. So this student's now getting the complete picture. Okay, now one of the things that I have put in the shared Google folder that you will have access to at the end of this presentation, you will find it in one of the links on the Tuzzle page, is a template to create learning statements for a topic or a unit or a concept that you're going to be teaching. I'm going to show you what that looks like right now. So I'm going to go into my drive. So just like any rubric that you create for your content, to start on what would be, what you would consider to be proficient um, for that particular idea, concept or skill, what should it look like? And then work your way down or up above and beyond for the other levels. Now you can use this template for any health, any PE, and that will just help you get an idea of what it is that you're looking for so that you can clearly communicate it to the students that you're teaching. Another very handy solo tool are hexagons. And the way these are used is that you write keywords or you have students write keywords on a topic on each hexagon. And then they start to create a matrix or a, a jigsaw where they're seeing the links and the connections between words, concepts and ideas that relate to what it is that you've been teaching in class. Now, depending on your level and depending on how much guidance you want to give your students, you may choose to provide keywords to get started. Um, another good idea is actually laminating hexagons so you can reuse them easily. Um, and use a hexagon map to help answer posted questions. Now I'm going to show you something that's going to come in very, very handy if you choose to use hexagons or any of the other kind of mind map type things. If you haven't used Google Draw before, I would highly, highly recommend it. I have Alice Keeler, who, if you're not following her on Twitter, I 
strongly recommend that you do because she is continually sharing fabulous technology ideas. But to create a Google Draw file, you simply go to New in the Google Drive, More, and select Google Drawings. And what that will do is pull up a blank template that looks like this. Now what you'll notice is that I've got all sorts of shapes and symbols over here that I've created because I know I might want to use these um, for a mind map or a word map or a learning map for solo taxonomy. So all you simply do is drag whatever you want and if I want to duplicate that rectangle I can just press the control D or command D if I'm on a Mac. It lines them up really nicely. So if any of you have ever been frustrated with um, Google Docs moving stuff in places you didn't want it to go, then you'll be very happy about this. And I can drag my symbols wherever I want them. So this might be a statement about the, I don't know anything. And you just place them wherever you want and then you can add arrows, you can write in a text box straight away and create whatever mind map that you want. Now this again is in the shared folder. I'm just gonna undo all this to get it back to its regular thing. So if you want to use this, go to file, make a copy anytime you want to build a new template and then save it uh, as whatever title you want for whatever ideas you want. So that way, all the icons, all the shapes are there for you. You just need to arrange them as you want. Or for a student, you could share this template and then they could then go and create what they want. So back to hexagons, I could put my hexagons straight in here and have the students write in ideas and then start moving the hexagons around and showing how they link together. So Google Drawing is a fantastic tool for this. And because you can have shapes and pictures off to the side, um, it makes it so much easier for you to create things. I'm gonna show an example of one I created. So this was a review doc, something for students to review ahead of our final. So at the, at the relational level here, sorry, the multi-structural level here, could they name the five health related components of fitness and then describe them. The next level up, could they relate them to the activities that we had done and we talked about? So swimming, weight training, badminton, team games, and then generalize to everyday life. So for example, how would flexibility help me in badminton, swimming, team games, and how does it benefit me in everyday life? Hopefully you can see down the bottom here, I'll just make it a bit larger. Oops, by the way. I also included a word bank to help out students and added a learning focus, what you're trying to be able to do with this. So again, a quick word tool, um, review tool for students to use. All right, let's hop back to the presentation again. Almost there. Now, the HOT maps stands for Hooked on Thinking. Um, the one I just showed you are examples of graphic organizers that can take students from one level to the next to the next. And Google Tool that I just talked about is wonderful for helping you with those things. And let's just say, which is, this is a wonderful problem to have, your students have mastered a concept or a skill or ideas. Then you need to look at them and say, where do you want to go next? Now, one idea might be to create a bank of ideas or challenges to keep students moving forward for each level. So if I'm on level three, these are some challenges that I could take to help my learning move towards level four, the extended abstract level, sorry, the relational level. If I'm already at the extended abstract level, then you can give them ideas of other places they can go. Now that's a little bit of a double-edged sword because you know, sometimes you want students to think of their own ideas rather than you putting them out there for them. 
Again, you will know your students and your audience and can advise them accordingly and, and just kind of gauge how much help they actually need with it. The other thing is if students are struggling further down the taxonomy, think about what supports you can put in place to help them. And this is something that I continuously did. You've got to emphasize that wherever you are, it's okay. The idea is that we want you to get to proficiency eventually. Somebody may get there in three or four days. Someone else might take three or four weeks. That's absolutely fine. So obviously at the end of the first full semester of using this, I wanted my students to give me some feedback. So I asked them on their end of uh, semester reflection to let me know what they thought of it. And I was very pleased with the feedback that I got. I mean, you can see here, um, I like this one at the bottom. Yeah, it made me think harder as an individual. Yes, as it explained what I should know in order to advance a level. For example, in order to move ab above the lower levels, one has to understand applications. Yes, it made me look at the whole picture and to the origin of why we're doing this. That it wasn't all about learning the game, it was why I should play and what health benefit it was to me other than the fun of it. So it was clear that they were getting the idea. Here's some more comments the students made. Um, it was very beneficial. Um, we were always encouraged to move up and improve where we were at. It was easier to see what I was good at and needed to improve upon. Yes, it helped me from the beginning. I didn't know much about health related components of fitness and how to blend them into daily life activities. Yes, it's been scientifically proven that people retain things better and understand more with visual cues and pictures. Now, I'd like to say that it was all roses and uh, everybody was happy with it, but you're not always gonna get everybody on board. So I did have some students who didn't like it, didn't find it useful, and then one that didn't actually know what the taxonomy meant. Now, this one could have been partially my, my fault. While I use the symbols extensively, I didn't use the terminology associated with the symbols extensively. So I wouldn't say to a student, so you're on the multi-structural level. It was um, using the symbols rather than the terms. And again, it's up to you whether you want to adopt the terminology or come up with something different. I was chatting with a physical educator a couple of weeks ago and she was talking about having uh, different picture, pictures for different levels instead. Again, like for most things, you find out what works for you and use it and make it fit your needs accordingly. There are also hand signals that people use for each level as well. And that may be useful for younger grade levels as well, or to give you a quick visual ballpark of where everybody's at. And I will post a picture of those in the slideshow after I've completed this. Now the next thing is, well, okay, it sounds good. Where do I go from here? Now the first thing I would recommend is purchasing these two books. Now, while the solar taxonomy was actually originally created by Biggs and Collis, Pam Hook, who is a teacher from New Zealand, has done a tremendous amount of work and produced some fantastic resources for solar taxonomy. And it's not often that you actually get books that directly relate to physical education, but both of these have wonderful pictures and diagrams and applications and examples of rubrics that you can take and use and modify for yourself. And if I remember correctly, the books are around $15 a piece. The other thing, and I'm gonna go through this right now, is Pam Hook's website which will come up here. And she has a ton of information, apps, free resources that you can use. So downloadable ones, symbol generators, and so on that you can use to suit whatever needs that you want. I also find that there's a Pinterest board which again has got lots and lots of different examples of how people are using solar taxonomy in their classroom. So again, you can get some different ideas about it. 
And here's one with a hexagon rubric. So you can see here, um, they've got several ideas about a concept. And at the relational level, now they're starting to be able to link these hexagons together and so on and so forth. So that's a great resource for you. And at the bottom here, there's a couple of blog posts and examples of how, again, people have been using solo taxonomy in their classrooms or using hexagons and solo taxonomy in their classrooms. So to conclude, I am absolutely going to keep using solo taxonomy. I've been very pleased with the fact that it has students being placed at the center of the learning progress process, and they are now seeing that I am accountable for my learning. I do need to demonstrate where I'm at, and I do need to buy in and ask for help if I need to, if I need help progressing to the next level. So I'm looking forward to continuing to use it. I haven't used it in all of my classes, but I'm starting to use it more and more and more because of the way that it makes learning visual and it supports um, student development through using the different statements and so on. So in this uh, folder that I'm gonna share with you, you will find a link to the current level of understanding template that I used. So this is just a half sheet that I printed. And again, I would just make a copy, change the terminology, add any extra hints or tips that you want. And again, a quick circle, students put a date by it because then you can see here I was on September the 2nd, now on September 15th I'm here, and maybe October 1st I've moved up a level so they can see. And what better way to show both students, um, your administrators, parents, progress than this. You know, it's learning is very, very visual. You also have obviously the presentation, um, some of the different posters that I've made for one for standard four here for teamwork. I have one for standard two. And we have a weight training one there as well. So please feel free to copy all of these, use them, make them your own. And if you have any questions whatsoever, then I will hopefully be around at the start, at the end of this presentation to answer any of your questions. Otherwise, you can get in touch with me uh, on Twitter at Love Fired or Bailey Joanna9 at gmail.com. And this QR code will link to the folder, as will this shorten URL button. So thank you very much. I hope you have found that helpful. And I look forward to chatting with more of you about solar taxonomy and helping support you if you choose to use it in your programs. Thank you.